Hey guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. My nickname is I Facebook, and then for this episode, I got something very special prepared for you guys today, which not only have taken me a lot of time to prepare, but also to my big surprise has taught me a thing or two about how exactly the game mechanics actually work and their actual value on the battlefield. The original drive and motivation to initially perform the test was to once and for all figure out whether the Russian buyers actually exist in regards of the shell precision and whether the German shells really tend to to dip before hitting its target. But I have not expected some of the results that we managed to achieve here. And furthermore, the test took me on a journey that ended up being at least 10 times longer than what was initially planned. Therefore, I hope that this video can help you out as a World of Tanks player to better understand the gun mechanics because at least for me, some of the surprises and knowledge that I have gained from the countless of hours of testing will not only make me better as a World of Tanks player but also make me less frustrated. And furthermore, it has also also taught me which modules can actually be disregarded and which modules suddenly have grown in value. And in addition, when faced with the data from the test, it all suddenly made sense. It explained why I can hit with pinpoint precision with my KV-2. It explains why my Polish heavy tank excels at sniping. And it explains why my object 252U, also known as Defender, cannot hit anything. Okay guys, let's get started. So the majority of the test features aiming at the German tier 10 heavy E100 at nearly the maximum viewing distance which is 445 meters. Because I've selected E100 for this test, simply because of the square and simple tank profile, and additionally, the flat surfaces makes it very easy for us to analyze where the point of impact is. <laughs> and last, as it is a tier 10, it will hopefully survive the testing runs and not die after one, two minutes, hopefully. So each of the precision tests are done with 100 shots and this is to give us a measurable figure to compare with. Yes, if the test were performed with 1000 or even 10,000 shots, it would definitely be more precise. But at least the 100 shots should be more than enough to detect and spot any larger difference and or even open up for some more testing. Which I must say <laughs> that this special World of Tanks Tank Buster edition indeed did accomplish. And before we dive into the testing, then here are some of the questions I was hoping to answer when talking about the gun precision. Does the Russian bias exist? Does the German shells tend to dive just before they hit a tank? And furthermore, would the worst crew with the worst turret be able to actually hit its target? Is the defender capable of hitting its targets at long range? And how does a German gun hit with poor dispersion rate versus, for example, the defender? How would a similar low tier Russian tank perform versus a German tank? Does the KV-2 actually stand a chance to hit targets at long range? Is the precision affected by a moving target even when full aimed and can someone actually be shooting at you without your knowledge and when using the auto in game mechanic do you then actually receive the exact same position and the last question I had would the worst artillery with the worst crew be able to hit and yes, as <laughs> here we have it. Guys check this dispersion rate of 1.25. Okay guys let's take a look. So for the first test we are using the tier 8 German Scorpion G which with its current setup is achieving a gun dispersion value of 0.25. Do notice the statistics in the top left corner which indicates the total results and behind the figures you can see the outline of the E100 tank where the red area is the bullseye. The area around the red bullseye circle is marked with two black lines and thus count as a crosshair hit. The category of other means any shell that did not hit the center nor the crosshair but anywhere else on the tank. And of course the miss category is not surprisingly the amount of shells that did not hit the tank. So the first test is especially interesting for two reasons. The first is to gather data whether the German shells tend to dip before the target is hit but also we will be building up a statistical baseline and this will help us in our comparison as our data will slowly but surely grow. One of the interesting parts is how often would you expect to hit your target at the maximum view range even with a 0.25 dispersion. And after the first test we can see that the Scorpion was fully capable of hitting its target where nearly 50% of them hit the bullseye. For this second test we are using the British tier 6 mission reward tank destroyer, the Excalibur, which also is able to achieve the amazing dispersion value of 0.25. For this particular test we are trying to verify that the German tank nationality does not secretly have the precision nerfed and furthermore to verify that the lower tier does not affect the precision despite same figures. The interesting part here is that from the statistical point of view there does not seem to be any major differences, at least when trying to answer the question whether the German nationality has received 
some kind of nerve in their precision, at least when comparing against the British. But the answer for this particular question will become more clear as the amount of data increases and as we will introduce more tank nationalities into the test. For the next test in just a few seconds we will be testing on whether there is a secret game mechanic when using the auto aim feature. And whether it improves or maybe worsens your aim. One thing is for certain that if you use your auto aim on a moving target then your aim will of course become worse unless your shells have a godlike shell velocity. But what about targets that are standing still? We should not expect any differences here, but nevertheless this test was still interesting to just verify that this game mechanic does not exist. The interesting part here is that the precision actually did increase, but the answer to why it actually did only first got clear during the very end of the test period. Because at this stage, it seems that the auto-aim definitely is better. Or could it be just a statistical glitch or something else? <laughs> the thing is that all of the tanks in this test are fully aimed before shooting. But what I noticed that after firing over 1000 times, that unless you are fully aimed for at least 2 seconds afterwards, even with a ping of around 50 milliseconds, then your shells actually tend to be more unprecise. I can only point this towards that this must be a wargaming server feature to reduce the amount of game data in the course of a battle to reduce the overall lag. If you ask me about this feature in 2010, okay, fair enough. But in 2020, that this is just disappointing. If I fired, let's say, two, three hundred times, then I could just point this towards the RNG. But during the recording, and the all of the amount of excluded shots, which was due to that I slightly moved the mouse before shooting, then the difference was actually like night and day. For the next test in just a second and final test for the Excalibur tank, I will be asking Ash, who is the driver behind E100, to keep moving back and forward. The question we are looking into answering is whether the precision is affected by a moving target even when fully aimed. This particular test was inspired by the myth of whether the crosshair locks itself on the target without your knowledge. Meaning if your target suddenly becomes harder to hit just because that the input from the server will send data back that the target is moving and therefore harder to hit for you. The results here was luckily a strong no, but you might be wondering why is this figure so much better? Well actually it does not really differ that much from the other results, because as the E100 moves back and forward, then the gun barrel suddenly becomes a bigger target as it angles up and down. In other words, this particular test only verified that if you want to increase your chances for your gun to absorb the shot, then just keep the tank moving, which you should of course do anyway, alongside moving it simultaneously left and right. The next test that is coming up is featuring the fast firing Soviet Tier 10 K91 medium tank. Here we will be able to test the best precision that the Russian tanks has to offer, featuring a dispersion value of 029. Yeah, I must say that this tank does take the shell velocity to another level. The shells actually have a staggering shell velocity of 1700 meters per second, which is completely nuts. For this particular test I was actually forced on multiple occasions to verify the results in super slow motion and frame by frame, as the shells often were barely visible. 
The question I was looking to answer for this test is whether we can see any Russian bias in the tank's performance. Is a Soviet 0.29 dispersion value just as good as the British or German 0.25? Based on the test results, then nothing is indicating that the Soviet 029 dispersion value have any noticeable advantage. The results here are the exact figures that was to be expected. But don't worry guys, the Russian bias testing is far from complete. And now to one of the most famous tanks out there, the Soviet Defender, or also known as the Object 252U which features with our current fit a dispersion value of 0.4. This tank is very well known for its troll armor, but especially for its horrible precision. This tank should surely not be able to hit anything at this range, right? The questions we are trying to answer here is how much does it actually differ from this 0.25 precision and will we be seeing the first signs of Russian bias in case the precision surprises us? Yeah, this test has clearly shown that when fully aimed, the defender is fully capable of hitting its targets. It was actually able to hit its target 96% of the time and 33% of all the shots actually hit the bullseye. Did we just see the first proof of the Russian bias? To answer this, we need to gather more data and this time we need to gather gun statistics from other tanks that share the exact same gun dispersion value of 0.4. And what better tank to compare it against than the fast reloading German T15 tank, which also boasts a gun dispersion of 0.4. Let's take a look. The results here actually ended up asking more questions as the defender seems actually to be more precise in regards of hitting the bullseye. But the general precision of 96% is the exact the same. Is this due to the, the Russian bias or could it be due to that the Panzer T15 is simply lower tier or was the shots when fired from the Panzer T15 gun not always given the additional 2 seconds of aiming time? Well, this calls for more testing, which means that afterwards we need to compare the German low tier head to head against another low tier Soviet tank that matches the exact same gun dispersion values. Next will be the tier 3 Soviet T116 light tank and the interesting part here will be to see how its gun performance will compare both against the T8 Defender but also the same tier Panzer T15. In other words, we are trying to verify whether the data of the German 0.4 dispersion is equally as strong as the Soviet against the lower and higher tier. To my big surprise, the gun of the Soviet T116 is extremely precise. The gun values here are not that far away from the Excalibur figures. This 0.4 dispersion gun is nearly just as precise as the Russian K91, which offers 0.29 dispersion. Meaning, the gun of the T116 in these tests performs more like a 0.3 dispersion gun rather than the 0.4 which it is given on paper. Furthermore, the question on whether the precision is better for high tiers suddenly seems shut down. Unless it's countered by the strong Russian bias, more data is needed.
So, if the Russian tank seems to be able to hit anything, then let's spice it up a bit and roll out the mighty KV-2 next, which offers a horrible dispersion value of 0.56 with our current fit. Surely this tank would miss the majority of its shots, right? Well, let's take a look what actually happens. Yes, the difference is definitely clear to see, but is the difference actually as big as we would expect? Yes, and wow, the KV-2 is actually able to hit its target 80% of the time. Yes, the E100 is a big tank. But nevertheless, a 0.56 dispersion value and it still hits 41% of the times, either with a bullseye hit or a crosshair shot. This surely must be the biggest proof that this Soviet bias exists. Well, to be certain of this, we will have to compare it against something even less precise afterwards. But this time, it must not be Russian. Yes, when looking for a tank with worse precision than the KV-2 heavy tank, then of course, what is needed is a light tank, which features the exact same KV-2 gun. Yeah, the one and only, the American T-49 light tank, which offers us a shocking gun dispersion value of 0.58. Coming up next. Surely the T-49 must stand no chance against the Russian buyers. And especially because its gun dispersion is even worse by 0.02. Well. Let's take a look what happens. Slowly but surely. Do notice that after each shot, the gun bloom on this tank is simply gigantic. It actually took me more than 10 seconds to be fully aimed after firing. And furthermore, do notice what at times happens to the poor E100 due to all of these high explosive shells. This particular result was a big surprise, as it not only stated that the Russian bias did not seem to be true, but the American T49 was actually way more precise against the so-called so much more precise KV-2. What is going on here? It looks like we need to take the testing to an even more extreme level afterwards so that we can once and for all fully or somewhat better understand the world of tanks gun mechanics because what is going on? So gloves off for the upcoming test because now we will be putting a 25% crew in the KV-2 and will therefore be able to achieve a dispersion value that would put a shiver down the spine on most tank commanders out there. Yes, we will be able to achieve a gun dispersion of 0.87. You might be wondering, how is it even possible to find a 25% crew? Well, what I did is to train a 50% crew to another light tank and then I kindly forced them to drive the tank for this test. A tank with 0.87 dispersion can surely not hit anything, especially 
at a range of more than 400 meters, right? Right? Come on, this cannot be right. Well, you know what guys? During the countless of hours of testing, I was actually often left with either a feeling of surprise, disappointment, or both. The surprising part for me is that if you can hit a target 65% of the times with one of the worst possible guns in the game, then what, what is the point, to be honest? You want to hit your target? Just wait until fully aimed. And preferably one two seconds more and just click the left mouse button. The disappointing part here is that this is, at least in my humble opinion, that this is the sheer laziness from the programmers, which you can clearly see and will be able to see in the next test. Because that is even more ridiculous than this one. Because at this point I was like, how much more can I push this test? Where is the limit? So, yes, I began my search, which led me to the Bison Artillery, which we saw in the garage at the beginning of the video. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So the worst possible dispersion I was able to achieve is 1.25 and to just make it even more ridiculous I'll auto aim. Why not? Wargaming, please prove me wrong, surely it will miss, right? Or the next shot must miss, right? What the? I'm speechless. Yeah, 97%. 97% <laughs> of all our shells hit its target. And it makes me wonder, what's the point in training the artillery crew in the first place? This is so broken. Wargaming might just as well just introduce the rocket artillery, which both Germans and Soviets had during the Second World War, like the Katushas or the Nebelwerfers. Press left click button once and the whole map gets spammed with missiles. You know what? It's too hard to press the left mouse button. Let's also press it for the players. Come on, don't make it too hard. Okay guys, let's take a look at what we have been able to accomplish during our test. So what did we learn? Does the Russian bias exist? It's a strong no and yes, because position wise for the higher tiers I do not see any firm evidence that this is the case. But due to that the majority of Russian tanks has that strong armor at the cost of precision then these tests only prove that the Soviet tanks are even more overpowered than I initially thought. Because the test has fully proven that their supposedly bad precision is not a weak side as long as you are fully aimed. The second question, does the German shells tend to dive just before they hit its target? Well, I did not find any evidence of such, but it proves that if you move the cursor even the slightest within a second or two, then your shell can completely miss 
the tank with a surprisingly ease. On the third question regarding whether the defender is capable of hitting its targets at long range, definitely yes. When fully aimed, it works perfectly as a sniper. Question 4. Is there any difference between a similar dispersion German tank versus the defender? And here there was no noticeable difference. Question 5. How would a similar low tier Russian tank perform versus a German tank? Well. The Russian lower tier T116 proved to be way more precise than it should be. If the Russian bias exists, then it surely is displayed here. For me it looks like the tank has a dispersion value of 0.3 rather than 0.4, which is the official number. Question 6. Does the KV-2 stand a chance to hit its targets at long range? Definitely. As long as the KV-2 is fully aimed, it is more than fully capable to function as a sniper. The evidence is clear. For the seventh question, is the precision affected by a moving target even when fully aimed? No, your gun precision is not affected, but the enemy tank stands a higher chance of bouncing the shell with its gun as it will become a bigger surface by either pointing up or downwards. For question 8, is the auto-aim game mechanic equally accurate? Yes. As long as you are fully aimed, then no major differences were detected. And would the worst crew with the worst turret be able to hit its target? And <laughs> yeah, and it's a definite yes. And that leads us to our question number 10. Would the worst artillery with the worst crew be able to auto aim hit? Yes but only 97% of the time. And the final bonus test, which is coming right up, is regarding the invisible shell. And this is a game feature that is known by a lot of players, but it still might come as a surprise regarding how fundamentally broken this mechanic actually is. Okay, let's take a look at the ghost shells. And here I start by asking Ash to fire into the bush. Nothing. But look at what happens when he is aiming at the exact same spot, but with the only difference that now we can see his tank. And to just verify... <laughs> yeah. Let me try to show you guys how broken this is in another way. Let's first be certain that Ash is still there and didn't leave us due to boredom. And here I'm asking him to fire through the window as soon as I verify that he's unspotted. And now I'll spot him again and ask him firing on the exact same position as before, meaning through the window. Yeah. I must say that these test runs have indeed answered a lot of questions that I have had in the past. For me, at least some of the findings I can already see myself fully utilized. And furthermore, I now strongly question the effectiveness of several modules that some of my tanks has previously been using, like the gun laying drive. Anyway, guys, I hope that this special test edition was helpful towards giving you a few useful tips, ideas, or maybe even better understanding of the world of tanks game and gun mechanics. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you think of the tests and findings in the comments below and also if you have some cool ideas on some game mechanics or some general world of tanks myths that you would like me to test out then do let me know and as always if you like to see more crazy content from my side feel free to leave a like or even subscribe it's a big thumbs up for me and i appreciate it a lot cheers guys take care and see you next time